if it's a choice between your dignity and your self-respect or staying with that person, even if you love them, you must choose your dignity. No matter Just, how hard it is, no matter if you live together, no matter if doesn't you, matter. whatever, doesn't matter. If it has gotten so bad that it is a choice between you yep. respecting yourself and you yep. being with them, you must choose yourself. <laughs> hey, we're on a podcast. Welcome to Growing Up With Me, Michaela Jill Murphy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm thrilled you're here. I'm happy to be here. <laughs> yes. So Avatar The Last Airbender, obviously, uh, my goodness, it's one of my favorite things ever made. And The Legend of Korra, two of my favorite series ever put out into the world. Of course, I want to get into that. But before we do, let's start even deeper, Michaela. Oh. What have been your keys to growing up? Keys to growing up? Yes. Uh, well, first of all, it's an honor to hear that you are a fan of the show. Very cool. Um, <laughs> Keys, keys to growing up. You know, there's been a lot of growing up this year. I'm 29 now. Uh, and this year in particular has been lots of fun, like end of 20s growth. So yeah. maybe I'll do, I like things in threes. I'll, I'll do Great. like a, a three prong. So I love it. I think uh, for like the first decade, since I'm approaching the end of my third decade here, key to growing up is, is I think like your relationship with your parents. If, yep. if you can try to have like empathy for your kids or empathy for your parent and just like try to be the best listener and team as you can be. I was an only child of a single mother and like life wouldn't have happened if we didn't like make it work between mm. us. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I guess uh, if you feel like you're a little bit at odds with your parents, try to have some grace and know that they're doing the best they can. That's key number one. Mm -hmm. uh, key number two, maybe for the, the teens, the, you know, 13 to 19 situation, uh, Friendships are important, along with the other things that you may think are important. I was in a really intense private school, so I was like, school, 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 and grades, and going to college, and then also I was doing some acting stuff, and so I was just, like, busy, and making friends was tricky and kind of hard for me, probably because only child thing. Yeah. But uh, I, I think it was also a fear of, like, people not liking me and mm. maybe losing those friendships, so... You need friends and the the price of the fear or the upset of maybe losing a friendship is worth the great friendships that you will get out of putting in an effort, you know, to connect with somebody else. Mm. So spend time on your friendships in your teens for sure. Uh, and then thing three in your 20s, which we're wrapping up soon. Gosh, mm. I don't I don't even know. There's so many because it's been so full recently. <laughs> so many different things. Uh Communicate more. There we go. That's that's my biggest thing. You can never communicate too much. If somebody's annoyed by you over communicating, that's like a small annoyance uh, in comparison to somebody being like, what's going on? I thought we were doing this in friendships and relationships, in business, whatever. Just yeah. over communicate, like yeah. hyper communicate. I think that's, yeah. That's my thing I, for the 20s. I love that. <laughs> yeah. No, that's that's good because there is a spectrum and sure yeah. you can go too far into communication, but I like sure. your your tip there that it's better to go too far into communication mm -hmm. than not communicate enough. Yeah, cuz things can kind of go nuts so. You've been experiencing that recently? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 and I was like, wow, I really thought that I was clear and people understood what was happening. Guess not. <laughs> this is in relationship or business yep. or friend? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you said yes. I threw out three things <laughs> and you said yes. Yes. The answer is yes. Correct. <laughs> mm -hmm. So yeah, that's, uh, I guess those are my, those are my three. I really <laughs> like your answers. I resonate with so much of that. Um, <laughs> and I think our audience will too. I, I had like a clip I don't know, go viral about like saying something about friendships and, you know, having people that you can say stuff to. And I saw so many people in the comments being like, but to do that, I would need friends. And uh, <laughs> that made me really sad. Yep. And also I understood it. I think there are a lot of people who I, I think you actually nailed it best, which is like there's a fear involved with putting yourself out there with friendships. And I think people can go a lot of years Maybe not even realizing it consciously, but like it's fear that's holding you back from making a new friend. Absolutely. Especially yeah. if you're any type of creative or performative and your version of that maybe doesn't feel like it has a place. Yeah. You know, seventh grade me, I was homeschooled for a couple years. And then when I came into like normal school again, uh, I was like knee-high converse. I wore long scarves in my hair to pretend I had a long ponytail. And I would like cartwheel down the hallways to class. Yeah. 
didn't really find like my <laughs> my friends immediately. We got there, but it was definitely like, what is this? <laughs> What's what, going on? What is this person? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I think it's kind of a bummer because, you know, as you like integrate yourself more into more of a mass of like a class that you see every day, you know, those parts kind of got polished up a little bit and I wasn't quite as out there. And I'm like, is that a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Is it neutral? Is it just growing up? I don't know. But yeah, it's tricky because, you know, you get made fun of a lot. And I didn't even realize it at the time. It like sunk in like junior year, how much I got made fun of then. And I was like, oh, (laughs) And then you were like, maybe I should adjust mm, how yeah. I show up. <laughs> maybe. Yeah. Or maybe I shouldn't. Like, <laughs> I know. No, that's the question. There's one time on Ned's where we were all playing World of Warcraft for a while. And then I deleted it because I was done with the game. And what I didn't realize was that deleting the game off my computer didn't cancel my subscription to the game. Turns out I paid for World of Warcraft for three years. Three years with it not on my computer before I caught it on my credit card statement. I don't even want to tell you how much it was a month. It was a lot of money. And I am a fool. (laughs) And that wouldn't have happened if I was using Rocket Money. Do you struggle with knowing what's coming in each month and what's going out and how many subscriptions you have and what bills you need to pay on what card? Do you leave it all automated but then kind of forget what's out there? I'm saying this as someone who does this. I've left my finances to be ambiguous for way too long. And Rocket Money allows it to all be right there in front of you. You link your cards, your bank accounts, you see all your subscriptions and all your bills right there in one easy to use interface. This allows you to know, what am I spending? Do I need to actually cut some of my subscriptions? And they make it easy to cancel. you know, am I am I spending too much? Am I, is not enough coming in? All these things. Oh, do I have this bill to pay? Oh, I forgot about that card. I forgot about that subscription. Like, this is how we grow up our money. This is how we grow up our finances and our financial freedom is getting clear on what we're doing with our money. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills all in one place. With over 5 million users and counting, Rocket Money has helped save its customers an average of $720 a year and $1 billion in total savings so far since they started. Listeners, I cannot recommend Rocket Money enough. It's time we grow up our finances. It's time to get clear on our spending, our budgets, our subscriptions, all of this. Rocket Money has made it easy and it's not expensive to use their very good service. Stop wasting money on things you don't use, like my World of Warcraft subscription. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions and manage your money the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash growing up. That's rocketmoney.com slash growing up. Rocketmoney.com slash growing up. Thanks to our sponsors. And now back to the show. When did you first make like good friends? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Michaela. Want to be my friend? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I just, five minutes ago, I met this really nice guy out front. Um, <laughs> no, I, I think in, there were a couple in high school for sure. Yeah that I started to get really close with just on a, like a weird level, just like kooky win. Um, oh gosh, what is it? Like photo booth on yeah. like computers, you know, just being silly, super weird, yeah. uh, in like a classic middle school way, not like the cool Gen Z middle school way. I know they're, um, they're like smoking cigarettes in sixth grade. It's amazing. <laughs> judging <laughs> like, each other's photos. No, you're very talented. Honestly, I'm like, uh, I was just farting and laughing a lot, you know, <laughs> Yeah, we were just putting on like six hats and like dancing around a Shania Twain and being <laughs> like, yeah, one day we'll be women. It's like, <laughs> I, I did that too. That's yeah. crazy. Wow. Now you're a woman. And look at that. Oh wow. Goodness. Incredible. <laughs> so yeah, that, that was like a good comfort spot. But it, as we, you know, went to college and grew, we grew, you know, differently, not in a bad way. And we've like come back together now, but we grew up. And then I found a couple of good close girlfriends in college, actually, in my sorority, though my college, like acapella was more Greek life than the sororities were. Wow. So, you know, it wasn't your standard like hazing and everybody does aggressive dances and it was more relaxed. But I found a couple really good girlfriends in um, in my sorority. And then... Where'd you go to college? I went to Yale. I know. Jesus. I know. Uh, I thought I wanted to be a surgeon. That's why I stopped acting when I was younger. It's It's been a, it's been a time. Wow. So, you know, so you went pre med at Yale? Really? Yeah. It, it ended very quickly um, <laughs> upon my arrival there because I burnt myself out. But 
uh, yeah, that was the intention. And so wow. there were a couple of good girlfriends from there and then um, a couple in New York that I surprisingly found while clubbing. And I feel like when you go out clubbing, you aren't necessarily meeting the people that are like going to be in your wedding. You're like, oh, this is the fun for the night. I'll see them only when it's dark outside, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Um, but there happened to be actually like an organic friendship of like they have real jobs and we all are doing real things outside of just dancing at 11 p.m. on a table. Yeah. So those are kind of like my little three like moments of, yeah, of like yeah. close, close friends um, where it was just easy and I didn't constantly be like, ah, like how can we talk about this and like doing yeah. it along and could I invite them to this? Would they have fun? Like all of that went out the window and it was yeah. just easy. And now being back in L.A., Post COVID, or I guess during COVID, I'm kind of ready for like drop number four because everybody else is so spread out and doing their own things, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I'm like, okay, who who now? <laughs> yeah, yeah <laughs> I'm, who's here? Yeah, because proximity here? does really matter. It's, it's like I have friends off. around the country, around yeah. the world, but yeah. like love them. Happy but, to see them when I'm there. Yeah, happy to see them when I'm in the same city, but, but like <laughs> that's not hard. here in my life. And, yeah, yeah, it's tricky. No, that makes sense. So yeah. That's uh, those are three pockets of friendships. Ready for fourth? <laughs> Ding! <laughs> Ding! Ding. <laughs> um, yeah, it's super important. I'm glad you brought it up as like a key to growing up because uh, I think it is. Uh, I mean, friendships are everything. That's that support. Also, having good friendships means if you get into a, a romantic relationship, you have a jury. <laughs> Unfortunately, yes. <laughs> Unfortunately, you have a jury to judge everything. But but no, you have. Other, you have love in your life that's not just that person. Yeah, or your you know, parents. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, if you end up in a relationship and you have no real close friends, you are going to need that person because yeah. they're your only source of friendship Zero and in. love. Yeah, you have no, Yeah, you haven't diversified your portfolio yeah. of love. <laughs> Had a call about that yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're trying to... Grow up. That yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> with a professional who actually knows what they're talking about. Oh, God bless. Yeah, I'm still <laughs> working on it. And I also like you said this thing about meeting those friends at the club that it was organic and and easy. And kind of all the friends you mentioned at this point in my life, if any friendship feels and for the last X amount of years, like if any friendship in, of mine feels that that thing where you're questioning yeah. it, like oh wait, no, I I don't know. Oh. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I, I didn't. Oh, yeah. I didn't get back to you. Oh my. If, <laughs> if any of that energy comes into a friendship, I'm not yeah. gonna pursue it. Yeah. There's a lot of my life that requires unsure feelings. That requires insecurity, guessing. Right. right? There, <laughs> yeah. Like tons of our creative life yeah. requires that, and tons of just life in general. Tons of growing up is difficult, and you have to question it, and the feedback isn't clear, yeah. and you kind of have to like forge ahead with friendships. Nah. Nah. Friendship for me should be, hey, do we love and respect each other? Do I trust you? Cool. Are we silly? Mm -hmm. Cool. Can we be serious? Cool. That's it. The if power you need something of saying from me, no whenever something isn't working. Yeah. But but trusting that, I get, that's my fourth key, I guess. But that takes so long to develop for me anyway, because I can't tell if I'm overthinking something and I'm like, stop overthinking it. It's fine. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, no, no, there's a reason mm -hmm. why we're overthinking it. So yeah, it's it's been a, a tricky thing to navigate, especially whenever there are people who I admire them, respect them, think they're great. And I'm like, this should work. Whether it be in professional friendship, relationship, Romantic, whatever. It's yeah, like, yeah. why why isn't this? I'm like, well, okay, well, wait. Maybe it's just the time. Maybe they're just busy. Maybe I'm just this. And so then I just go into a tailspin and it's like, no, just... Right. Your Bye. feeling is just okay. a no. Bye. You don't have to talk yourself out <laughs> yeah. of it. Or into it. Or into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Both. It's, yeah, it's both. So true. That took me a long time as well. I feel pretty uh, good on it. It's good. <laughs> in the last maybe four years. I'm 32. We're close in age. So yeah. um, how does it feel finishing your 20s, Michaela? Honestly, fine. 25 was my crisis year. Okay. Yeah, I feel like people have different moments where they just, things hit them in Fall the face. Fall apart. Yeah. yeah. And that was definitely my, oh my gosh, what's happening? It's been a quarter of a century. Who, where am I? Who am I? Yeah, how did what's it hit? Mine Mine hit it around 25. Okay. It hit with oh boy. my parents getting divorced, oh no. me running out of money, oh, a major no. relationship ending, oh my career feeling very far away. Like, 
it all stacked within oh, no. a couple years. And there's there's some more, but like that's kind of how mine showed up. And then it was like a seven year mental breakdown. <laughs> how did how did yours show up? Five, six, and why are you doing okay. so okay so okay now? Uh, well, okay. So <laughs> 25 was the the August I'm a Leo, August 18th. Woo, yay. For Go anybody Leos. who cares. I'm not. That's I'm not the, the hair is so big today. It's matching. It's it's amazing. Oh yeah, um, you're giving big Leo yeah. energy. <laughs> big, big right now. It's a lot of color. So uh I, yeah, turned 25 in 2019. And it was kind of a combination. It's it was like the most busy uh, and most awesome and most terrible for lots of different reasons. Um I dealt with a crappy breakup at the beginning of the year that I had to end for self-respect reasons. And then God bless. it was, yeah, those are, those are the worst when you're like, I have to break up with you. Yeah. You've left me no choice. Otherwise I'm just being terrible to myself. Yeah. Like now I have to do this. Yeah, I'm annoyed I've, I've at you. Some of this. Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah. Anyway. Damn it. I wanted this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So that's how the year started. And we had gone on like just, a vacation. Yeah. Just real quick. If it's a choice between your dignity and your self-respect or staying with that person, even if you love them, you must choose your dignity. No matter just, how hard it is, no matter if you live together, no matter if doesn't you, matter. whatever, doesn't matter. If they, if, if it has gotten so bad that it is a choice between you yep. respecting yourself and you yep. being with them, you must choose yourself. There was a quote on the radio right before I turned off my car and came in here that said, they're like, oh, I just, I heard this the other day and it really resonated with me. The beginning of happiness is better than the middle of misery. Wow. I know. That's cute. I know. I like it. Yeah. So even if you're in the middle of something and you're like, ah, the beginning of like not feeling that way. Yes. Will be worth it. Anyway. So (laughs) we just gotten back from like a holiday trip together. I met his dad and then came back and like two days in, he was dumb. And I was (laughs) like, well, that was fun. We just had a whole holiday thing. And that just kicked off my like, I'm trying everything. So I worked for a handbag company in New York called Dagny Dover. I was an intern for a few months. I started singing with a cover band in New York and sang at Bowery Electric and like out in Hamptons. Um, I started working at a club for adult people uh, as a cocktail waitress just Mm -hmm. for fun. I was like, why not? Fuck it. Try it. Um, And I'm not tall enough to be a bottle girl in New York. You have to be like a model to be like a, a bottle girl. You have to be tall and like super very very pretty model. And I'm like, I'm 5'4 and like more like quirky and cute. So that's not going to, it's not going to work. So yeah, I just started doing a bunch. And on top of all that, I was tutoring for the SAT and the ACT, which is what most arts kids who come out of college do. They just start tutoring other people (laughs) for, for money and auditioning for a bunch of stuff on Broadway, taking dance classes, taking singing lessons. And it was just all of that was happening at one time. Yeah. And then I neared 25 and had just started like saving a little bit. My goal like was like just save 50 bucks in like my savings account and yeah. then just save a hundred and yeah. just get get to a thousand. Okay, let's get to two thousand. Like it was just a slow roll. And it was like the first summer I was able to do like a girl's trip for someone's birthday. Uh one of the girlfriends that I'm close with in New York. And she wanted to go to Tulum. And I was like, oh my gosh, I have like six thousand in savings right now. I can actually afford this. I can spend the couple hundred bucks for the flight and spend the couple hundred bucks for the Airbnb and have a couple hundred for the food while I'm there and do like a grown up cool girl thing. And so that felt really cool. But then I also felt like, you know, I would love to be on Broadway one day. And it felt like I was doing all this work in New York and liking New York, but I was nowhere close to like being on Broadway and making original music was kind of happening on the side with the cover band too. And I was just like, doing too much and doing nothing all at once, if that makes sense. So my mom's ex-boyfriend was getting rid of his Prius. He was moving. Yes, he was moving to Morocco for work, hence their breakup, Uh, a little far away. And he was like, I'm not going to use my Prius anymore. Do you want it? It was in Indiana. And so I said, sure. And I turned it into like the turning 25 road trip. I flew to Indiana, picked up the car, visited a bunch of friends in some states, went to Nashville for the first time, speaking of some country music. And actually, while I was in Nashville, I I called the Bluebird on my birthday. It was open mic night. And I was like, if I get a spot, I'll find a guitar player on Facebook. We'll write a song and we'll sing. And if I don't, I'll just go and watch. And I got a slot. So I just did the thing. It was great. Found a random guitar player, wrote a song, performed it on my birthday. And then I like felt okay. Yeah. Like, a leading up until that, I was, like, freaking out. I was yeah. like, what's happening with my life? And then I was just, like, singing at the Bluebird in Nashville. And I was like, it's all good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's all good. 
And then the last couple of years, obviously, were not necessarily all good. But <laughs> <laughs> but I learned how to navigate a lot in all of that. So, yeah, yeah I don't know. I'm just more okay being me regardless of all of the chaos that might happen around me. Yeah. And it just took that year, that time, the last couple of years. I don't know. So, yeah, yeah, 30's fine. Yeah. I like threes, like I said. You're 29, so you'll mm-hmm. be 30 mm-hmm. August. So you have this yeah. is the last year of your 20s. The last year. Mm-hmm. Crazy. Yeah. I got to turn 30 during a pandemic. That was yeah, fun. Yeah, that's no. No, 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 <laughs> it's no, not. No, really. no, 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 it's really not. <laughs> but yeah, it, 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 I don't know. Things have gotten better. That's Things good. have gotten better. Yeah, I was about to say, you said that you also had a 25 crisis year. What? Yeah. And then you said seven years. It's been yeah. a little... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, mine lasted for like six years. Mine lasted until like last year. Okay, well, yeah, I mean, the, the pandemic doesn't help. The pandemic you could have been a little a bit up and then it just goes yeah. right back down. So. Yeah, exactly. The <laughs> pandemic was a big kind of catalyst, actually for the good changes too, but also was a part of the I feel that. The stuck Especially for awfulness. the Avatar stuff, for sure. What's that? I said especially for the Avatar stuff, for sure. Like just people were at home watching things again. I rewatched both series during the pandemic. There you go. Yeah. yeah. So like that it was like so a very cool thing while all this other not cool stuff was happening. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Let's talk about Avatar. Okay. Let's, let's go to Avatar it. talk. Hold on. <laughs> you have something we're and I have it. something. Okay. We're gonna go to <laughs> which you are you're on. Oh gosh. You're back there. I'm back there. There she is. Melon um, Lord. She exists. And I, I painted this headband and my hair might look a little crazy, but you know You what? made it yourself? I mean not the actual band. Okay, okay. But like I bought the band, it was white and I painted yeah. it and That's put so on my cute. little poofs. I know, it was a fun little little That's craft so fun. project. <laughs> um so oh my goodness. Uh Avatar the last airbender was airing while Ned's was airing. It's the same yeah. years, right? It's 2004 to 2007. A lot of lot of crossover. Yeah. I think yeah. it was 2005 to 2008. Yeah, yeah there yep. you go. Um so, yeah, I remember right. watching it while filming Ned's and like Daniel and I uh we we loved that show then awesome. and it <laughs> it continued to be I know for me, one of my favorite things that's ever been made, even when I rewatch it as an adult, like just the storytelling is yep. so beautiful um and so uh human and so good it's just yeah. it's just everything so <laughs> tell me how old were you when you got on it i was 12 and 13 so i yeah, started when i was 12 um sixth end of sixth grade era um i actually think i was technically 11 when i started it, uh, in Avatar world because yeah. I voiced Mang in season one. She was in the episode The Fortune Teller. She had the crush on Aang. Yeah. Yeah. When she calls Katara floozy or yeah. whatever. Yeah. So I was 11 when I did that and apparently that was like the catalyst for one of the directors um, told me this a couple years ago. Giancarlo was like that was when they were talking about making Toph into more like a female character and not kind of like the Bolin, bro-y, bulky kind of dude character and they were like huh, that might be we should call her back. That yeah. might be, that might be her yeah, tough. Like, that'd be a cool yeah. voice for this. Mm-hmm. So they, I didn't know Email it was the same tough air, uh, earth show, Yeah. But when they sent the audition for the other thing, I was just like, oh, there's another audition. Yeah. Whatever. But uh, yeah, it was apparently what they were looking for. Uh huh. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, Ned's has like this impact with an audience all these years later and has just been such a major part of my life in cycles. Like it kind of goes away for a time and then comes back around. Right now I'm obviously in a bigger kind of boom with it because we're doing the Ned's podcast and we're doing Ned's live shows and like all this stuff has kind of resurfaced with it. TikTok, when I started that a few years ago, that was like a resurfacing of it too. Yeah. Uh, yeah, how is your experience with being part of something when you're a kid that's going to last for the rest of, of your, your fucking life? <laughs> it's it's a mixed bag. This uh-huh. is my first, I guess, return wave. I also, I didn't have cable growing up. So I wasn't watching along. And anytime I was at like a friend's house, I would glue my eyes to their screen and like absorb every Disney and Nicklet or whatever, like content. I yeah. was big like Kim Possible, That's a Raven, yep. you know, Liz McGuire, all that. So I didn't know the development and we, you know, we didn't have social media. So we couldn't really tell the impact at that time. Exactly. Um, exactly. People were fans. And like, if I met people in person, they'd be like, oh, cool. I love that show. But other than that, 
How are yeah. you going to know? Also, you're a voice, not a face. So mm-hmm. there's that thing, too. Mm-hmm. And as I get older, obviously, my voice is, is this because I wasn't putting on a voice. I was just like 12-year-old me, which is like this. But I don't talk like that anymore. Right, right, <laughs> so right. Now people are like, oh, are you Azula? I'm like, funny. Maybe. No. I, <laughs> <laughs> I could be. <laughs> I could be now. Um, yeah. So that's this is my first like wave. Like you said, things kind of come in cycle. So this yeah. is like the first return cycle where I kind of recognized that it would be happening again probably like it would become this lifelong cyclical thing yeah um especially with the live actions that they're working on they're working yeah. on more animated content i'm 99.9 percent sure i'm not going to be a part of any of those yeah but like they're still going to be the original people are still gonna yeah it, see that it call feed it back, back in. yeah and people are getting more involved in cosplay and just like even anime conventions like fan art and just creators like making merch based off of it it's just yep. a whole universe yep. basically so it's Definitely life changing. Uh, that is thing number one that I'm very grateful for. Just I don't know. It's kind of was a Taylor Swift perspective thing too. A lot of people don't want to be attached to the thing that they did ten years ago. Mm. Especially as a creator, you're like, but this is my new album. This is my new movie. For this is my sure. new thing. And there's a large basket of people that will literally never care about what I do, aside from being tough. Yeah, and that's okay. But also how cool is it that I got to be a part of something that is so loved and recognized. People work for their whole lives and sometimes don't get that. And it's not even because they're not talented. It's just time, place. The audience decides to like it. Like you just have no control over these things. So I very much just absorbed that and was like, the fans of this show are the reason that I'm able to live my life right now. And I said the Taylor Swift thing because she's really good at, I think, recognizing that. Yeah. And really infusing the love back where yeah, she can. the old song. Yeah, yeah and like showing back. up at some people's weddings and yeah. like, you know, inviting the major fans out to like do the the movie premiere that yeah. lasts, you know, whatever week, couple weeks, something for her era's tour, you know, that sort of thing. Yeah. And just like reconnecting because like it is a whole community. Like they're the reason you're there. So yeah, it was kind of a, a lot of these people are always going to just comment tough things, ask Avatar questions. Yep. I could be winning an Oscar for something else. And they're yep. going to be like, Toph! Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's, it's, just, it's me. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's me. gonna be me. Hi. I, no, I am no, Toph. I'm it's saying me. I'm yeah. going to be that person. Yeah. <laughs> that's going to, you're going to be winning an Oscar and I'm going to be like, Toph! It's Toph! Yeah! <laughs> Say Twinkle Toes! <laughs> Literally. And, and then, and I will do so happily. Like that's, you know, it's a stepping stone. So yeah. I'm. <laughs> Listen, I get you. I, I will be Ned to some people forever. 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 Yeah. Some people. <laughs> I've had to embrace it too. It's been such a mixed bag because I have yeah, so many so other, weird. not only creative talents, but like creative visions, creative dreams. There's so many other things that I do. That like I just, so released, I just released yeah. new music that's like- I saw it. Sounds hey, good. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, I just released all this new music that's like real fucking cool. I'm stoked on creatively. It's like my yeah. favorite thing right now. But still, of course, there's comments that are just like, Ned. Yes. <laughs> and you're like, yes. Ned's music. <laughs> yeah, I have learned to embrace it though, for sure. I have yeah. learned to just be like, yeah, it's what you said. Like, it's so loved. What am I gonna turn? I'm gonna shit on that. Like, I'm gonna shit yeah. on something that people like love in yeah. their inner child. Like, yeah. no. Nah. I think absorbing it into your identity is is kind of your only peaceful choice in one sense, but you can also do with that what you will. Like, yeah. you know, just as a Tangent, I also sing, I also dance, like I mentioned, I would love to be on Broadway. Yeah. Taking a musical theater jazz dance class and like singing is so not Avatar World, Nickelodeon animation, whatever. Yeah. But I love, you know, music and sustainability and whatever. So there's a a world where also like Toph is blind. So she's probably very like audio and sensory influenced. So she probably loves music. Right. She probably loves, you know, there's ways to just kind of include her in everything that I do. Yeah. And I feel like that's a good idea. Yeah. Because otherwise you're becoming the person who's like, you know, play the song that we're all here to hear. And then you don't because you're like only no. playing your new music. Yeah, and you're yeah. like, come on, that's what you got you that. here. Exactly. Like, yeah. So <laughs> it's been uh, definitely, I think it's more of a kid thing too. I feel like maybe yeah. maybe adults feel this way, but kid actors into adult actors bringing the stuff when they were younger because it's such a different identity that you have. For sure. That it's like weird. I feel like yeah. if you're on like The Office, Obviously, you're gonna carry that you, with you. You are, you are so right. You know, you're so right. Yes, even it's easy even, to, um, yeah. even Anna Lisa from uh, That's a Raven. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. I interviewed her recently, and she was like, 
you know, 16, 17, 18 on that. So Raven, like yeah. a little more adult ish. even ish on it. And I feel like if you're full adult on a show that gets big, say in your twenties, yeah. easy to carry with you. It it has been weird kind of integrating this childhood time in my life yes. into my adult identity for sure. Yeah. Being like sure. a fully formed like adult woman who wants to be in love and like have children and is like a sensual person and likes to eat and curse and like makes mistakes is not like a 12 year old girl. Yeah. So it's very much like it's both. Yeah. But I'm not. And not just a 12 year old girl, a 12 year old actress yeah. or like a 12, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like that's a whole, it's Different. a whole thing. Whole thing. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it has taken time. Mm -hmm. I, I also, I think it's good to kind of embrace these parts of our identity. I also find it important, at least in moments, with even you at home, even with whatever identity you have, mother, a uh, good student, teacher, whatever your job is, whatever identity you have, at times it's really good to try and see what identity you have and just occasionally set it all down. Yep. Even though I embrace my Devin Ned identity, even though I literally make content around it, if I can find a day on the beach or maybe around New Year's or just a night, whatever, just some time to myself where I literally let all of my identities drop and just be whatever the fuck I am with no labels, with no history, with no... I think that's also important too because identity is tricky. It can while embracing it can like help you, uh, I don't know, get clear on yourself. Yeah. It can also become a, it can become a trap and yeah. you gotta like a check in with it. Prison almost. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like there have been times where I'm like, no, I'm, I'm embracing my identity and realize like, yeah. then I realize, oh, I'm actually kind of stuck in this. Yeah. I don't feel free. No. Yeah. That's, that's a good way to phrase it. I think I'm coming to that. Yeah. realization that those moments are necessary and like learning how to do that. Yeah. I think that's happened a couple times this year, but I think I could do it better, you yeah. know, where it's really just like every single thing just. Yeah. Just drop, drop it. it for a moment drop it. and just be. Just be. Just be. That. Just be. Yeah. That's it. I know With it's No hard. intention, no like trying, no thing that you're trying to resolve by the end of the being and just, just be. Yeah. Literally just be, yeah. Yeah, I think Not it's my hard. strong suit. No, there's good practices for it, obviously. <laughs> Meditation, yeah. yoga. Yeah. And that's the opposite Nature of hikes. What got me, I feel like, into college, you know? That's like the opposite mindset of, it is. of that. literally the opposite. You went to world. Yale to become a surgeon. Yeah, that's full <laughs> ambition, full commitment to suffer in the now for yeah. some dream of later. Yeah. All like all of my friends who I love dearly and I also identify with this, but are very intense. Not in like a are mean to you and like you know terrible people, yeah. but just like there's so much to do and so much to keep track of, yeah. and there's so many years of school and so many just it's always a ding 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 ding, ding. and oh jumping in and oh and you have to speak up or else you're not going to get heard and you yeah. have to do and you have to be the one that's like going to take the first step because nobody's going to offer you and it's just yeah. And so bringing that back into a creative space, it has rubbed a lot of people not the best way. Oh, really? And they just find me to be, you know, very intense or I'm only driven by the results or only care about the money or only care about hmm. the opportunity, which is valid. Yeah. Seeing it from their perspective, I'm like, well, that would make sense. Yeah. But I lived in, you know, eight years basically of you have to do that or you don't make it to yeah. the top. And so I'm like, wow, that's like the opposite of what I was doing when I was a kid. And now it's the opposite of what I need to be when I walk into a creative space or around creative people. But then I want to turn it back on when I'm talking about diversifying my portfolio <laughs> or building a business or talking to, you know, a new app developer and, and his project. And then I want to plug it back into that. Yeah. You know? So it's the Balance. identity thing is weird for me because I'm like, I'm everything and nothing and neither and both. I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. It's interesting to yeah. navigate. Dropping it's a balance. Identity should happen more often. It should happen more I mean, often. this is growing up. This is it. This, this is, how, is it, guys. This is how you balance Sitting it, Sitting on a man. couch in an Avatar hoodie. This is That's growing right. up. <laughs> Honestly, this hoodie's hot, though. I'm going to take it off. Yeah. This, hoodie, this hoodie's warm. It's not that cold in L.A. yet. Yeah, there you go. Okay. We've okay. we've we've crossed the Avatar threshold. Yeah. but There man, you go. I... Uh, yeah, Sydney Raz, he asked if I had ever interviewed you, and I hadn't, and I was so glad. You're my first avatar 
Ass <laughs> number. Oh, I love the show so much. Listeners at home, if you have never graced yourself with the full series of Avatar The Last Airbender and The Legend of Korra, mm -hmm. you're just missing out. It's incredible storytelling. It's, I ended up, you know, I didn't do the surgery thing. I ended up majoring in screenwriting and, and theater. And Beautiful. It's really cool coming back to Avatar as an adult, but also from the perspective of like screenwriting, story arc, Dude, screenwriting, the story, the story, soundtrack. Yeah. You know, just character development. And it's, it's funny because it seems so simple when you think about creating a character, creating a, a living, breathing person to relate to. It seems simple because we are that and we know people and we've yeah. grown up with people. But it's actually very hard to translate to paper and then to the actor and have the director be able to guide it in the right direction. It's all just a very, like, delicate process. It is. And, you know, I appreciate being a part of something that was so well done. I think that's an issue I have with auditioning now is a lot of times I pull something up and it's it's fine most of the time and sometimes I'm like whoa this is really cool and sometimes I'm like who wrote this is this supposed to be relatable yeah I can I edit it yeah yeah <laughs> I don't think I'm allowed to do that yeah. but you know it starts to get in my head from like a you know editor's perspective sure. or director's perspective now and I'm like dang no it is Avatar so is great. rare <laughs> it is so rare and so difficult to end up on a project in TV or film that is just well made from mm -hmm. top to bottom yeah. because so much has to be good along the way so during, much has to be good so much has to go right it's it's crazy. amazing anything gets done well it's made i know um and <laughs> yeah. then and then for something like avatar that's timeless i've watched it at 30 and been just as enthralled with it even though ultimately it was made for kids um you know Made for all ages. Yeah, yeah. I, it is though. It's it's all ages, yeah. and they made you know they made something timeless. Um, it's very rare to end up on something that's that yeah. that's that good. That's a testament to obviously Mike and Brian, of course. Yes, but they also have a very you know I'm not like super super tight with them, but I've talked to them you know a couple of times, and we caught up a couple of years ago and got lunch like right before the pandemic happened. Yeah. And they've always just been very like, what's the what's the word that I'm looking for? True to their artistic vision, I suppose. Mm. So the original story, they wrote that, not every single detail at the beginning, but it was kind of like a three season arc. Like it was pre made. It wasn't mm -hmm. just a give us a good pilot and we'll just see how it runs. Yeah. Like they wanted to make a story and give it to you. Mm. Um, and you know, I remember people were clamoring back then even, they're like season four, season four. And it was like, no, this is it's the story. It's done, yeah, yeah. It's done. And I think there's full circle. There's power to saying no. It yeah. maintains the integrity of the magic when you're able to say no when you know that the story is complete. Yeah. And that's why people keep rewatching. That's why people rewatch Disney movies and rewatch Harry Potter and re yeah. you know, they, there's an end of the story. They didn't make 14 books and they're making the yeah. 15th one. They that that was the story. So. Yeah, I think that there's a lot of power in that, and I keep that in mind when I'm thinking of writing and creating. It's yeah. like, just make make the story. Don't make just a pitch that somebody's going to like at the beginning. What's the story? Yeah, Complete yeah it has story, to have you know? limits. That's mm -hmm. where it lives. It yeah. can't be an unending... I mean, you brought up The Office earlier. Like, yeah. there you go. They kept yeah. that going just a few seasons beyond it needing to be a sure. show anymore. Like, yeah. You just don't yeah. need to keep going, right? And sometimes with that kind of structure, it's fine. Yeah. Similar with Friends. Like, yeah. you can drop into any one of those episodes and technically pick up on who's who, and enjoy it. Yeah, yeah. It's fine. Yeah. Uh, but if you're trying to tell something that is really tied yeah, to the character. Yeah, mythic arc. Yeah. No, um, know where your end is, I feel like. What was it like coming back for Legend of Korra? Because that series yeah. still t stands the test of time for me. Mm -hmm. That fourth season and kind of the arc of the four seasons Yep. has this deep PTSD yeah. arc and it's dealt yeah. with in it's dealt with in such a way in such a moving way I haven't seen it done in film or TV the way The Legend of Korra did like yeah. she's dealing with PTSD like and it spiritual limiting trauma <laughs> yes and it, yeah. it it traumatizing her um, out of her own kind of power and destiny and mm -hmm. ability like and it's dealt with so beautifully yeah. Yeah. There's like the scene where she's in the fucking big tree in like uh -huh. the fourth season where she like overcomes it. And yeah. I'm weeping every time yeah. I watch it. I've watched the series like three times. And yeah. every time I'm like, <gasps> what's happening? We can heal ourselves. <laughs> 
Um, yeah, what was it like getting to come back? It was it was cool. I was in high school at the time. You know, people are like, you know, did you play older Toph in core? I was like, well, I was only fifteen, so I could <laughs> I couldn't couldn't play an old woman nor an adult woman. But thank you for having that much faith in me. So yeah, they it was just a call, like, sophomore, or junior, or something like that. They're like, hey, can you send us a voice sample just so that you sound like what we think you sound like? And you know, we want to just bring you in for a guest spot. And I, yeah. I voiced young Suya, and I voiced my own daughter. Got it. In a in a flashback scene where Lynn gets her scar, that whole like backstory. Yep, yep, yep. yep. And it was cool. It was really cool to come back into the studio after like going into school mode and be like, cool. Yeah. (laughs) That's how my reaction to most things as a kid were like booking things. Now I feel like just anything creative, I mean, YouTube, TikTok, everything has made it like when you book something, when you're working on something, it's like you're doing it. And it was just more relaxed back then, especially for voiceover because yeah. people, Voice-over it so wasn't relaxed. quite as, as popular and recognized as it is now. Yeah. So it was just like, oh, cool. I got a job. Awesome. Yeah. And like, oh, this is fun. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to go to school. Bye. Bye. Like it yeah, wasn't. Yeah. yeah. You come and do your job. A big deal. Yeah. yeah. And so coming back in was neat. The, the, <laughs> the director, Andrea, who is a genius. And I recognize that more every single time I work with a director. I'm like, man, she was good. Yeah. Because I go back and forth with people sometimes quick sidebar and it, it's frustrating because I feel like they are trying to tell me something and I do something. They're like, okay, yes, kind of, but like try this. And then sometimes I'll get like a line read where they try to like read the line back. And I'm like, what's going on? Mm-hmm. And I was a kid. Mm-hmm. Granted, you know, I was Working, decently good at yeah. my job. But like I, I got maybe one note, maybe two, and she got what she needed out of me. That is a sign of her talent. Yeah, not yeah. mine. You know what I mean? Yeah, her clarity on how to communicate with you yes. and get what she needs. And yep. like once she figured out how I worked, she yep. was able to just get in there. And a lot of times we would be able to do it in one take. Like it was seamless. And so anyway, I just remember going in, working with her again, and it was cool to see her. And this is a fun tidbit story that I like to tell. So my stage name when I was a kid was Jesse Flower. People mispronounced my name. I wanted to be cooler, whatever. Mm-hmm. So we tried to theme our holiday gifts to, you know, agents and directors and everybody around that. Uh, But we were a little tight on cash. So we would always go to the 99 cent store first and be like, okay, what has flowers on it? Like, (laughs) it's because, you know, Jesse Flower. Yeah. And we found those little collapsible flowers that you like push the button on the bottom and the the little thing falls over and then you release it. It's like back up like a little wooden toy or whatever. And they were like sunflowers and it was really cute. So we got a bunch of them, put little like happy holidays from Jesse Flower, little plaques on the yeah. the pot and gave those out to everybody for holiday gifts. And when I came back in to record Cora, she still had it on her desk from like four years prior. And That's I was pretty like, precious. And she does not keep a messy desk. There yeah. were like three things up there and the flower was one of them. It, and I was like... It stood as cute <laughs> enough and a little memento. I was like, wow, that that brings me... Okay. No, I'm, <laughs> I'm good. I'm I, fine. I have value in the world. <laughs> Yeah. Someone cares. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that part was really cool. Yeah, that's very cool. Um, yeah, I think we go a lot of our, uh, definitely a lot of our creative lives, but probably a lot of non-creative lives. We we, we go uh, wondering if anything we do makes an impact on mm. anyone. <laughs> yeah. If any of our effort has Does mattered anything. to anyone. <laughs> yep. Well, I think there's something I'm not particularly actively religious. I feel like I've met too many people of differing religions. I'm like, and everybody claims you're right. How can I pick one? Yeah. But there's a, you know, through line for most that's, you know, do unto your neighbor as you would do unto yourself kind of thing. And I feel like a lot of us have stepped away from that because of social media. We're worried about something that's on the other side of the world, what's happening in a different state, what somebody's cousin's friend's aunt is doing and it's like how's the person who's next door yeah how is the person who's parked out front of your house and they're having an issue with their flat tire you know what i mean like we've kind of forgot about the immediate right in front yeah uh because we're so connected elsewhere to everything yeah what's right in front of us and i think that's what what makes it a little empty i mean that's the point is to be like oh you need a cup of sugar no problem true Oh, can I crash on your your couch tomorrow? Yeah. They're doing the painting job in my living room. Yeah, that's where the humanity lives, and and True. we've forgotten that. Well, and that's how you see it. Yeah, because in action. Yeah, I can send a loving message to someone far away, yeah. and I know they received it. But you're not like getting that reciprocal, yeah. immediate 
thing that you get from connecting with a person. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm but trying to in, integrate that more. In LA, bit. it's tough. It's <laughs> like I know I know one of my neighbors. Na- I know. Yeah, I know see, like one like- of my neighbors. <laughs> yeah. And then we're all just too busy. Like yeah. even within LA, I I know too many people with within LA. I can't keep up with my neighbors. Yeah. No. It's hard. Mm-hmm. Well, and even I mean, even people in LA is good. It doesn't. It, it can be yeah, your yeah. direct neighbor, but yeah, yeah. even just the the yeah. local people of like stopping everything, being like, I should get dinner with, with my girlfriend. So, yeah, you know, I haven't seen them in a while. Let me give them a Facetime. Hey, how are you? Want to get tacos this Saturday? Like, yeah, just yeah. What do you wish more. you spent less time focused on in your twenties? Worrying. <laughs> Uh, okay. But uh, I accept. for more more specifically, let's see. Um, it's tricky growing up with no real liquid cash uh, because coming out of that like just survival mentality is really really hard. And I could tell when I was in it too. I'm like, man, I need to relax. Like I know life works out. Like. People in their 20s struggle all the time. It's it's supposed to be tough. Just focus on the things you love doing and it'll work out. And I just couldn't. Yeah. just couldn't. It was so stressful for me because I was so worried that I was just going to be stuck squeaking out a yeah. dollar here and there. Yeah. And so it was a really big worry. And I think, you know, at Yale, actually, they recently got rid of, like, the student contribution for financial aid. And I have – mixed feelings about it because, yes, people need to get paid as far as professors and paying for books. Like, you have to pay for things that you want (laughs) in some instances. But that would have been so nice to have, too, because I had to pay uh, for part of my tuition because of my acting experience. So they look at the student if you've, like, been working and make money, and they look at the parent. And my mom didn't owe anything, and, like, I had a student contribution because I had been working. And I had to work a lot in undergrad. So I was doing, like, two or three jobs consistently throughout and like signing up for med studies for either that would like pay 200 bucks or whatever just to pay that off pay off the loans pay for books and try to like have fun and pay for food and whatever and it just it I think kind of set up my 20s to be in like a little bit of panic mode because even when I graduated I felt like nothing when I graduated from high school I was like man worked hard okay oh my gosh like I accomplished something and when I got to the end of Yale I was like okay (laughs) right I was just right. like I'm done. I was dead. To... I didn't. Yeah, I didn't feel like I'd accomplished much. Damn. And so whenever I got to New York, I just moved to New York right after because it was Connecticut, yeah. New York, right there. I was just in like, I have to start strong. I got three jobs and was just like trying to audition in between all of those, and I was just exhausted. And I was like, this can't be it. But I don't know yeah, what else to do. Life. You know. So I think it's it's hard coming out of that. You know. I'm, I'm, Born in southern Indiana, the whole rest of my family, aside from my mom and me, are, are there yeah. living a more stereotypical lifestyle of teaching, civil engineering, that sort of being a nurse, whatever, and just doing life kind of normally, quote unquote. And so my mom and I navigating, coming out to L.A., I decided I wanted to be the actor. She didn't like force me. There was none of that. It was like, hey, this looks fun. Can I be in a commercial? And that's how it all got started. So navigating that, but like watching her struggle and work a bunch of jobs while I was like very much independent from the age of like five. I like could make breakfast and I would do my own laundry sometimes, like which I was fine doing. Like we were a team. It was like, you're making stuff happen. I'm making stuff happen. (laughs) And that's why we can be here, you know? And so I think that's just really tricky to to grow from. And it's like- start to unplug like that you're okay now like it's okay we don't need to freak out as much Mm -hmm. and like cling to everything but it's just hard and new york is crazy expensive as we all know so (laughs) you know walking outside and intense and all of it all the things walking outside costs you like 70 dollars. they're like oh you took a breath of air today that would be (laughs) exactly yeah (laughs) so i think if there was a way for me to not be as worried about like how i was going to become financially secure yeah. I would, but it was just such a present thing growing yeah. up that I don't think that that was possible. But yeah. hopefully for my next 30s. generation, for my kids, for myself, sure. you know, kind of have that not be as present sure. in their childhood and growing up, you know. Yeah. I didn't have it in my childhood, but I had it through those years of my 20s that I was talking about. Yes. That <laughs> that it's that tough. money survival Yep. Anxiety existence Mm -hmm. is, man, is it difficult. It's so tough. Yeah. So tough. Because it seeps in 
at least low level to like every moment. Every single thing. If you're genuinely on the edge of money and which mm -hmm. some of us end up that way for years, low level, you're waking up with stress. Yep. Just immediately. E immediately. Yeah. From the time you wake up to the time you go to bed, if you're in debt or you don't yep. know how you're paying next month's bills, man, just a chunk, maybe even low level, 15%, but maybe more of your being is yeah. occupied by that yeah. at all times. It is really hard to let go of. And you have to make choices. So my thing was, you know, the monthly subway pass at the time was like, I think a hundred bucks, 115 bucks or something. So I was like, I'm doing the monthly subway pass and I'm not taking a cab or a car unless it's like an emergency. Like right. if something's wrong, somebody gets hurt. Right. And I didn't let myself take a car. And right. I stayed true to that basically the whole time, except for a couple times when friends maybe partied a little too much, whatever. Sure, sure, but sure. like I took the train, didn't matter if it was 2 a.m., one in the afternoon, if one was delayed, took the train. Yeah. And I didn't Uber Eats or order pizza to my apartment. Those were the two things I was like, you cannot do you're those You're not things. paying delivery fees no. and you're not paying for a car. No. Yeah. But keeping those present, anytime someone's like, oh, that's this, I would have to do a quick pause, recalculation. Yep. I'll just meet you there. Yep. I'll just whatever. Like I had to function a different way than I ideally wanted to and would function now. Yeah, because yeah. you had to. Yeah. But and at some point, you have to then change that thinking. Once you start to make a little bit more, you have to be like, okay, you can ease off like the freaking out a little bit so that you can start to like actually integrate Live. the new <laughs> things that you want in your life. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's really tough, especially when you don't have somebody to talk to about that specific thing. And that ties into the friendships and that ties into the relationships everything. too. It ties into everything. Mm -hmm. So yeah, focus on... The, the the money stress if if I could take that out yeah uh, or lessen it don't think it. you can don't think I could have I yeah. think that's just you know that was my generational step right. kind of I was like all right my mom did the hardest part we moved out to L A and then I'm doing the second hardest part I have to build up right you know that's that's my role yeah that's why I'm here and and so. some of these what do I want to call them like some of these steps we have to take in our life aren't as simple as putting one foot in front of the other in terms of some of these are like a 10 year cycle yeah. you have to work through. It's crazy. Um, it, it really is. But that is growing up as well. I found like, man, some of these changes I want to make mentally yeah, or physically or spiritually, like some of these journeys are like 10 year cycle, 15 mm -hmm. year cycle. Like, man, I've been really working on that lesson for a long 10 time. years. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, my uh, big one now I feel like is uh, moving, really getting better at distinguishing what actions I'm taking that are just short-term comfort and what actions actually are aligned to my long-term goals. Yeah. And getting more discerning about that. I feel like that's been my last few years and I still mm -hmm. don't have a great handle on it. Like there's tons I'm building long-term, oh, yeah. but plenty of my day can be spent in my short term, scrolling yep. on the phone, yep. coffee, like yeah. just immediate comforts, yeah. you know? My recent thing has been just less, actually, no drinking. Uh, and that has always been kind of a tricky thing because I love going out. I love dancing. I love putting on an interestingly promiscuous outfit sometimes. <laughs> you know, it's fun. Yes, uh, fuck yes it, it is. It's great to like go hop on a table in Miami dance, but like I've never liked drinking really but it it's was just like a part of going out it. so I yeah. was like okay but like the taste wasn't good my tummy doesn't like it my head doesn't like it like <laughs> you know even if I just have a couple like I'm noticeably foggy the yeah. next day and I'm just like what's the point why am I paying $22 for some fancy little cocktail thing that like does nothing for me I hate holding it it's dripping there's condensation and I've got this dance. drink in my hand now <laughs> I can't move and so I just I stopped and I didn't drink in high school and so you know people are like oh you're judgy I'm like no, I just, can I still come to the Playboy party? Like, I still want to come. I right. just don't want to, can I not? No? Okay. Right. <laughs> it's like, I'm and swearing. you can. Yeah, absolutely. And so the last few months has been me very actively saying, no, not in an aggressive way, but yeah. I would still like be like, oh, if people are having wine, I'll have yeah. wine, if people, whatever. And I've just been actively saying like, no to everything. Like, oh, I just want water. Yeah. And most people are fine. Usually I'll get a mocktail, like some, you know, yeah. interesting version without alcohol of something. And, you know, a couple people have been like, wait, really? You're not going to have a drink? I'm like, yeah, no, I'm good. Yeah. And they're like, but it's so fun. I'm like, for you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. And then like a couple times, it's like a, an hour goes by, an hour and a half, and they're just like, 
take a shot with us. Come on, take one drink. Yep. I'm like, why are you so pressed about this? Because you must. Why? Because it's, we're all it's doing all it. Good. <laughs> it. For me, it's a switch. I'm like, oh, everyone's getting loopy and starting to like swirl things in the mm -hmm. air. Floop. I can do that. Yeah, no yeah, yeah. problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm keeping that chill because like, oh, everyone's like being chill right now. Yeah, and yeah. I'm just like waiting for the moment. <laughs> yeah. You're like, like, get weird. Turn it up. I'm with you. Now we're weird. Awesome. <laughs> so that's been like a real thing. That's cool. Too, because yeah. I feel like in especially talking about travel, talking about industry, anything like a business meeting, if you go out to a dinner, you have a drink, yeah. you whatever. Yeah, yeah. And so I've been actively just integrating like having mocktails at bars. Yeah. Because I'm not like, oh, I don't drink. Can we go somewhere else? No, I'll right. go to the bar. I love going to a bar. Usually right. they're beautiful. Usually like there's pretty lighting and like cool designs. Right. I like bars. I just get a mocktail. Yeah. No big deal. That's great. Yeah. I know more and more friends that move in that direction as yeah. we get older. Like some obviously out of addiction issues. Like some because sure. when they drink, it's a Absolutely. fucking problem. Yeah. But I know plenty of friends who move into that choice yeah. just out of like your reasoning, which is just like, nah. Yeah. Like I don't need it. The virgin mojito is going to taste as good as the non-virgin mojito. Yeah, and I'll feel Cheaper better the I'll next better. day. Yeah. I... <laughs> I still have yet, even though I agree <laughs> with all your sentiments, I don't feel good after drinking. Uh, but I hey. still <laughs> love drinking. And there's nothing <laughs> there's nothing wrong. I mean, there is something I will say about a beautifully crafted cocktail. Oh, like if you go to a really beautiful. nice bar and it's some smoky cinnamon thing with like a drop of orange, like yeah. it's beautiful and I enjoy it. Yeah. I gotta There's say, a I also enjoy. I, I I also enjoy, you know, like five of those cocktails. The, <laughs> the how free I feel, you know. Yeah, well, that's something to also sit on, though. It's like, why? Why do I? Why do I feel the need to? Because do life that is hard, feel... Michaela. Because I'm processing. There are other a lot, things you can do some, that aren't alcohol. Yeah, there are, and I do those things. But sometimes <laughs> I fucking drink, and then even my hangover. I've had this where even a hangover yeah. sometimes is like blissful because I'm like you're still kind just, of like. Well, I'm like I just feel static. I don't feel <laughs> I don't feel all the my voices talking and all my anxieties. I just feel too tired to be depressed. Well, there you go. I actually had this recently where <laughs> I, I had a nice party at a friend's place, and yeah. the next day I was. I had been kind of depressed the couple of weeks. There's a lot going on in the world. It was, it was yeah, painful. Yeah. But I woke up that next morning. I'd stayed up way too fucking late. I drank too much. And I was like, I'm too tired to be depressed. <laughs> and for that, I am grateful. I'm too tired to care. <laughs> Sometimes I will say, I don't know if it's, it's, somebody probably will write the reason why somewhere in comments or something. But there have been many a time where I wake up after drinking a lot. And for some reason, my skin is just glowing. Like, huh. So some clear. physiological yeah. thing. And I'm not saying that this is a long-term thing. It's yeah. more of an occasional yeah, thing. Yeah. But like sometimes, and it could be, and let's get a little TMI. Sometimes when I've had a little too much to drink and then there's some reversal of those drinks, uh, the next mornings after those, my face is extra glowy because I like purge the toxin. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so my skin is like, woo. And I was Jeez. like, all right, well, that's I'll the one it. upside of yeah. that night, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, we're uh, yeah, not no, gonna I got use you. that it's, for skincare. It, it, yeah, don't use alcohol don't for skincare, use that for skincare. Uh, or or mental health to be or honest. Even though it worked for me the other day, don't <laughs> let's not use alcohol for processing no, your mental well, health. It's hard. I don't want to say that I put that out into the world. No, but it, I mean, it is. It Someone's is gonna be like fucking hard. Told me <laughs> this. I'm this is the advice. The thing is, I'm not depressed anymore because I drink every day and I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> I'm too tired to live. No problem. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with it. Clearly, like there's a lot of fun and it helps a lot of people just take a little bit of the edge off but I also know that like my throat is the first thing to get affected oh, if I feel oh, a little singing, under the weather voice, my sinuses all, get a little all, stuffy all if, even if I have like two glasses of wine yeah. so I think I might be a little allergic no, to alcohol yeah like, no and tons of poison. us tons of us abuse it like let's <laughs> let's be real like if you have a good relationship with alcohol cool but like plenty of people abuse it on yeah. the regular yeah. like <laughs> with no questioning of it They're like yeah I fucking blacked out twice last week and you're like and you're uh, alive <laughs> um, amazing don't make that a normal thing um yeah. especially with voice acting coming back into my world yeah as of late i'm like yeah. why not yeah i you know one of my my easier i guess toolbox items to pull out is like the super squeaky clear voice like this 
And so if I mess with my throat too much, you can't do that's that. going to go away. And For I don't sh- want that. <laughs> For sure. So I want to keep that. I got to I got to okay. say, um hearing that voice like if I close my eyes, hearing that for a cartoon would be like very normal and cool, mm-hmm. but uh Seeing looking looking into that. your eyes while you're talking like that? <laughs> a little freaky. Freaky. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta say, um, thinking yeah. about cartoon voices, uh-huh. yeah, while looking at someone doing them, yeah, that was yep. that was a different experience for me. Yeah, especially when they're really squeaky and like yeah, high like pitched. It's when like it's... a little jarring to see. Yeah, like works a human for being a cartoon, compared. weird for yeah. a human. Mm-hmm. Very cool though. Your voice yeah. can do things. That's very high. Mm-hmm. I, I love. love... Yeah, there I, you go. Yeah, I got some. I got some false. I got it's some range. There. Yeah, I should smoke less weed. I, I do sing. <laughs> I should really stop destroying my range with it. Well, that was the thing too with theater. Like I was singing a lot in college. I was singing in a cappella. Mm. Anytime you're doing vocal warmups, like I can feel the phlegm from. Oh, for sure. From drinking, from even too much Certain dairy food, and sugar, yeah. from just whatever. And I was like, why? Yeah. And some people can do it. I think Ariana Grande has talked about this. She smokes all the time. She has 16 coffees a day. No. She was taking. Dr- she was doing everything, and she was fine. And so many singers. Bless her. So many. Not me. So Can't many singers. It. Whiskey, cigarettes, all this shit, and they yeah. can sing. I now, so if singers. I was a rocker, like if I was like Miley Cyrus, like doing a really cool like thing, raspy I can't even thing? do it. Yeah. I can't do a raspy thing. I know so many singers who can sing after smoking weed, and like I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. This isn't fair. No, it's not fair. Um, well, amazing. This has been great. Uh, yeah. Getting to know some of your journey. Thanks. For Thanks to Sydney Raz for I know. Thanks, for Sid. hooking this up. Seriously. Uh, <laughs> You know, Toph will go down as as just one of my favorite characters the ever created. greatest earthbender in the world. And don't you two dunderheads ever forget it. That's right. Oh, this is making my <laughs> child, my inner child, so fucking blissful. <laughs> uh, and my adult self. I'm happy. Today's a good day. Good. Uh, See? No <laughs> drinks. No drinks necessary. No drinks. Just, just some Toph. Just coffee for me. Just a little, and little bit of rocks. Just a little bit of Toph. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> Before we go, I like to leave my audience. You've already dropped many nuggets, many pearls of wisdom, but I like to leave uh, the audience with one tip. One tip for growing up. You've already dropped some. Okay. But but just an additional... An additional tip. You know, I I just think there's a lot of us out there striving to be better, striving to be more balanced, striving to figure things out. And I like thinking about the people listening who are going through that. Yeah, same. I think we're all in that boat together. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, I think, I guess one that we, we kind of talked about like saying no, but like being okay with actually articulating your boundaries to yourself and to others and like being okay with them. You don't have to be mean and aggressive, but like if you just truly aren't interested in like actually going on that second date or you're like, you know, I'm really not in the mood to go to the movies or I'm actually really hungry and would prefer to just sit here and have some soup. Just being okay with that. If that makes somebody like annoyed or frustrated, that's on them. And maybe you waited till the last minute and maybe that's frustrating. Apologize for that part. But just, you know, it's go with the gut feeling. The gut feeling, man. If you're like, man, I'm just really feeling this sort of way, good, bad, indifferent, any sort of way, trust it. You know, it's there for a reason. And I think, I guess this will be my my final little thing as a bow to that is that people are different. Everybody's not supposed to get along with everybody. Everybody has a completely different life, different experience, different gut feelings. So it's not going to mesh with everyone, and that part is okay. So I think that's where that is, I'm at right now. That's what that I leave so you with. Good. So yeah. So good. <laughs> um, thank you so much. Where can people find you? I'll I'll be you know with the badger moles um, in the <laughs> in, in the, the mountains. <laughs> yeah. In a cave. Uh, I'm on I'm on Instagram and TikTok, as many of us are. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm also starting to maybe figure out some long-form YouTube. Cool. And just talk about, I don't know, skin things, life things, voiceover things. I don't cool. know. Figure it out. But on Instagram and YouTube, I'm at Michaela Mostly because it's mostly me. Ha, ha, ha. Anyway. Ah, and then I like uh, that. TikTok, they didn't, they didn't have that available. So it's just my full name, Michaela Jill Murphy. And cool. I, I post some funny little Toff Talks or TikToks. Ah, <laughs> TikToks. Uh, like on there with with it, actually I just toss it on anytime I hear a sound that's applicable and I'm like oh we, that could be a fun little top spin so yeah so great um, we'll, we'll put your your stuff the things, in the description the <laughs> and uh, it's great to know you yeah thanks for being here thank you for having me it's been a pleasure <laughs> we're growing up guys woo see ya bye